Okay, for those of you wondering, there's a frack in Ripley's bed, and uh, there's a <laughs> Ripley. <laughs> Not quite sure of it. In either case, we're going to get on with this video. Yeah, I know. He'll go over there. Uh, they have been doing good, so just anybody wondering what's been going on, because I haven't made a video in a long time, and this one's going to be uh, back to the old uh, tutorial of, uh, of uh, mechanical stuff, so uh, if you're not interested in that, uh, turn the channel now. <laughs> Shut it down, hang up, whatever you want to call it. All right, Rippy. All right, so to preface this video, uh, without too much talking on my part before we begin here, um, I'll be doing a uh, rear axle seal on this uh, 1990 Ford Ranger, and uh, you may not be able to see it, but the axle seal is leaking here. And uh, this is on a 7.5 rear end. Um, this is a limited slip. It's got that uh, crazy little uh, um, oh, clip in the middle or spring, whatever you want to call it. It's like a uh, um, like a weak, 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 weak posi traction type thing to keep the spider gears together. And we'll go over that uh, when I get to it. Um, I haven't gotten the parts yet, so I'm not going to tear this apart right this minute. I just thought I'd make this intro as to what we're going to be working with. And, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it'll, it'll be kind of a quick one. I'll do it in sections. And uh, I will show you what tools you will need. Uh, there are a couple of... Uh, Especially pullers that you're going to need to get the bearing and seal out. So uh, we'll go over that when the time comes. All right, let's get going then. All righty, I've already started here. Let me go over a few things really quickly. If you're doing this on the ground, which you probably are, guys that have a lift don't really need this kind of uh, tutorial. Um, make sure your car is on level ground if it's on an incline or anything. Or either way, chalk up the front wheels real good before you raise up the rear end. Nothing's going to hold your car in place. Um, the other thing uh, we want to start with here is uh, once you have everything up off the ground going, of course, remove the rear wheel wheels if you're going to do both sides, which is a good idea. And I'll tell you later why I, I'm not doing both sides. Remove your brake drum or your rotor, whatever the case may be so you can get at the axle. Okay, now I've loosened all the uh, bolts on the uh, differential plate back here and what I do is uh, I take all the bolts off except for two that I just put in on two threads. That way uh, when the cover lo loosens up um, this thing isn't going to fall off and oil is going to splash everywhere. It'll kind of hold it up here. Um, now if you have a gasket on your original rear end, uh, do not bother to get a new gasket. Um, just clean the area up real good and also um, use RTV silicone and run a bead around every hole and you know all the way around and that'll seal it up. You don't need that gasket. The gasket is just going to leak in time. Um, Alright, so on the other scent here, we're, what we're ready for um, I use a, uh, I don't know what you call this, a drywall putty knife or a, a spatula, whatever. It's very thick and it's very hard and firm. It's got a good edge on it and I use that. Do not use a screwdriver to pry this cover off. You're going to screw up the gasket surface. So we'll go from there and we'll do this. Uh, let me get this right so I can get at it without making a mess. And uh, I usually come in down here under that and I start to work around. Now this is siliconed on so it's going to be a really tight or hard fit from when I did it last time. And you might have to work it around a little bit just to 
even if there's a gasket on it without silicone, you'll probably have to do this as well. Alright, it's kind of cold out here this morning. And my old body isn't working that great. Alright, anyway, there comes the oil. And we'll go ahead and let that drain. So we'll continue this on in a second. <coughs> All right, now that the cover's loose and a lot of the oil is already out, I'm going to take these two remaining bolts out, keeping a little bit of pressure on it so the glob doesn't fly at me. And there we go. Okay. So, there. Okay, now what we got, let me see if I can focus in on that. We've got the differential. Uh, the clips that we need to loosen are in here on each axle. And you'll notice that this uh, spring is kind of in the way. Now, when we turn the axle around, We'll see there's a, uh, a groove in there, and what we have to do is we've got to kind of move the spider gears. This is why the cars or the truck is in neutral, and this spring acts like kind of a posi traction, although a very, uh, you know, kind of crappy one, but it doesn't allow the spider gears to go t completely free. It brings tension on both wheels. Um, so we got to get in that. And what we got to do is we got to push the axle in from out here, and that'll bring the clip past this spring. All right. So I'm going to mess with that, which is always going to be a little bit of a fight, and uh, we'll get back to it after I get that clip out of there. And like I said, that's not a fun, fun thing. Probably the worst part of the job. Alright. We're at this point now, and I need to mention, uh, there's a 5 16th or 8 millimeter pin that holds the, uh, the spider gears in place, and you will need to remove this pin. Um, that is kind of a pain in the ass, but, uh, We'll go at it here. Maybe you can't see it. You need to hold the ring and pinion and uh, get. Uh, Christ. There we go. All right. Let's see if we can get a hold of this uh, without oop, busting a nut. Okay. This is where everything gets kind of tight in here. And, uh, the gear oil, <laughs> this 9110 weight, or whatever the hell I got in here, I can't remember, uh, makes things very slippery. So, uh, yeah. See if I can get a standard wrench in there. All right, hang on, I'll be back and we'll start it again. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Maybe it'll help. Alright, so here's the pin that needs to come out of the spider gear uh, pin, or uh, uh, yeah, riding surface in there. Now, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to rotate this so you can get the pin out where it clears, which is there, right about there. You'll have to find the sweet spot. So, now, what should happen is we can push the pin, I think we're at the right, okay, we're not at the right stop, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to go from the other side to knock that pin out, let me get this axle back a little bit, same with that one, and we will need to get a little punch and a tiny hammer to knock that out.
All right, all I've done here is I've, I've taken this and uh, on the opposite side of where it's bolted up, you know, with a pin in it, I've just tapped it a little bit with a tiny hammer and a little punch. So it kind of made a groove in there. Now, okay, here's, here's the thing. We got uh, the pin falling out and getting into the housing here. All right, there we go. Okay, we're going to take this pin out down to there. Um, yeah, see this is a problem with these damn things when you get them in the right position. You're going to have to find a way to get that pin out of the way of the axle. Which, it loves to interfere with the uh, ring gear. So, basically, now we can push the axle all the way in to get that clip out of there. And I know it's going to be very hard to see that. Oops. Okay. So we got that there, and now here's the clip exposed, which you can now kind of take two screwdrivers and push that out, and it'll fall in. Now, once you have that done, don't rotate the the differential again. The, well, the pin will be in the way anyway. Just leave it there, because if you take the pin all the way out, if you can, uh, the spider gears will try to move right out of the out of the uh, cluster. So anyway, okay, I'm going to fight now with two screwdrivers and push that C-clip off the axle, and then we can take the axle all the way out. All right, nothing crazy here. I got the clip off, and this is what the clip looks like right here. That goes with a flat side towards the gears when you're putting it together again. Let me wipe that off. That is some nasty. I hate working on differentials. I like them when they're brand new. Setting them up for the drag car was always fun. Well, new when they were new. <laughs> All the parts were new. So anyway, you get that clip out of there. Okay. And since I'm only doing the one side, I'm not concerned about the other one, but it's the same thing. You push the axle in enough to get the clip past this uh, spring in there. So, okay, let's uh, zoom back out again. And we'll try to take a better picture of what's in there. So that you might see the axle is over here. There's a C-clip. So that's the differential. Alright. Now, let's try this. Let's see if we got it. I'm going to leave the car up in the air, or truck up in the air. Usually I do this. And we'll take the axle out. Try not to get the fluid all over the all over the uh, brakes and we can see here that this uh, seal this seal right here this is a what they call an axle saver bearing uh, in other words this one piece uh, comes with a seal already installed in it and uh, it moves the bearing to a different part of the axle. If you've got any kind of wear or tear on the axle itself, this moves the bearing surface to a good usable surface. Now the only reason I put these in is back when I replaced these, I hadn't taken the rear end apart yet. It was just making kind of a funky noise. So I ordered these just to make sure. This time around I'll be putting in the original uh, bearings because the axles are good, the bearing surface on them. And uh, let me see here, let me get a rag again. Ah, what a mess. Okay. So, we're looking at the bearing surface here, and you can see you've got quite an area that is usable. Whoops, okay, we have seen that? Uh, that's usable for the bearing. And all that 
bear axle saver does is move the bearing out to a new position. This is the old position, if you want to call it that. So there's nothing wrong with that. A little bit of a ridge, just a tiny one, but nothing bad. So the axle wasn't shaking up and down. I know the bearing wasn't shocked, so the seal, I don't know why it popped out, but I drive the truck so little, you know, maybe 100 or 200 miles a year. And uh, it, it probably just, with the cooler weather, decided to start leaking and popping out or whatever. So, all right, we'll move on to how to remove the bearings. And I'm going to have to lower the truck to get my puller and everything else, and I'll show you what, what we do next. Alrighty, let's get this going. What you will need for this job is a slide hammer and these special tools that go in there to capture the bearing. These go in. Let's put this together. Slide hammer and adapter. I want to get that on there. With almost all the threads. Now these things come in three different sizes for different bearings. And uh, they go in here like that. And then you get behind it. Behind the bearing. Open it up. And you start to... Now I gotta do this from the other side. <laughs> and the housing shatters. Yeah, that'll happen. Um, wow. Well, that puppy was really worn out. Um, still, you gotta get in there and get behind the race. Behind the bearing race. And this is also a fiddly thing. Um, so, ugh. all right. Anyway, you get the drift. That's how it's going to work. And uh, I'm going to have to get a little bit more uh, muscle on it and get this camera out of my way. So uh, we'll get back to it after that. I'll get it out of there. All right, campers, after much to do, these bearing savers do not have the same lip on the back of them as a normal bearing does. And I could not get this out with a slide hammer. Well, at least not to begin with. Um, you can see the difference in the lip of a stock bearing and a uh, bearing saver, or at least this kind of bearing saver. Now, what I did... <laughs> And unless you have this kind of equipment laying around, I uh, used the MIG welder and I welded up inside the, uh, the bearing saver to heat it up real good. And uh, because I didn't want to use a torch and everything, but uh, I just welded a bunch of beads in there to heat it real up. And then the puller, well actually I had to use a uh, air chisel to try to spin it just a little bit. And then I used the puller to pull it out. So, uh, yeah, be careful. When you're doing this kind of work, you might <laughs> want to make sure you have the equipment. Now, if you got a stock bearing in there, like I said, uh, these, you know, will come out with a puller. I know that because I've done, you know, hundreds of them. So, uh, all right, anyway, we're going to move forward now. I'm going to put uh, my welder away again and clean up a little bit here so we can put things together nice and clean. Alrighty, I got things put away here, and what we will do next is we will put some wheel bearing grease onto the new bearing. And we're just going to glob that in there. Now I know this is going to run in oil, in differential oil, but to start out with it's going to be dry. Because differential oil just doesn't go up that, that quick, that far. So. I'm just going to coat these really good, go around in there like that, okay, no big deal. The oil will wash the grease away and it won't hurt anything. Um, same thing for the seal, it'll 
be coated with grease. Don't have to go crazy on that. Just so you get everything lubricated real nice so that that stays uh, lubricated before the oil gets to it. Okay? And then, let's see here, let me put the grease put away. Let me wipe my finger off. Uh, okay. Uh, usually I use bearing drivers to put bearings in. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the perfect size for that. And what I'm going to do is uh, go, go kind of old school here. Hang on a minute. And this is going to be a little overkill looking, but I have my reasons for it. So we're going to put the bearing in there, okay, get it started up by hand, and I'm going to use a big socket. And the reason I'm using a sledgehammer is not for the weight or anything like that, but just because the socket has that big hole in there. So, I'm going to get it started square, then I'm going to drive it home. I'm slipping here. You'll hear it. There you go. Hear the different in the sound? Alright, that's that. And now for the seal. Alright, damn camera was off. Alright, I coated the bearing with uh, wheel bearing grease and also the seal. I put it in with a big socket for the bearing and then with a uh, bearing driver. Uh, you know, one of these on the handle, uh, this here until it's seated. So, uh, I fortunately the camera was off while I did that. So, uh, anyway, we're ready to put the axle in and uh, got to get it in there and kind of line it up with the uh, gears inside. <laughs> and I just already had it in there, and now since the camera's on, it isn't working perfectly. There we go. Alright. There you go. Okay, that's it. Alright, hope it helps somebody. Talk to you later.